This is the first chapter in this course, which is titled Rig Anything with Rigify. And in this course, we are going to do exactly that. We are going to learn how we can rig pretty much any character using Rigify. If you haven't watched the introductory video yet, please check it out. So let's get started with this first chapter. In this chapter, we are not going to be using Rigify. We are going to rig this simple character using the standard Blender armatures. There are two reasons I want to include this chapter. First, I want it to serve as a crash course in Blender bones or Blender armatures. So for people who are not familiar, uh, you'll learn how to create bones, uh, manipulate them, move them around, parent them, how to set up constraints. These things are done for us in Rigify, but it's still important that we know the, the very basics. And the second reason is I want this exercise to serve as a, a comparison. I want to be able to compare the standard workflow and the Rigify workflow, and then we can appreciate even more how fast and how efficient rigging with Rigify is. So let's get started. I'm just going to give this uh, humanoid character a very simple rig. So here we have our character. I want to give him a skeleton. So I'm going to press Shift A, Armature, and choose Single Bone. Okay, then I'm going to go to this tab over here called the Armature tab. Click that and expand Viewport Display and in there check In Front and Axis. In Front allows us to see our bones even when it's hidden behind or inside uh, the character mesh. And Axis gives us this axis here and that allows us to make sure that our bones are properly aligned. So without further ado, let's go to edit mode and uh, start editing this bone. I'm going to go to side view. First, uh, let's uh, see what we can do with this bone. Blender bones have these two nodules at the end of the bone and you can select them and move them around. You move them like any other object in Blender with uh, the G key. And you can also click inside the bone and then you can select the whole bone. And that allows you to manipulate this bone uh, again like any other object in Blender. You can press G to move it around. You can pr press R to rotate it and S to scale it. Now I'm going to work with the nodules and I'm going to align the thick part of the bone around the pelvis area. This part of the bone, the, the, the bottom part, is going to be aligned with the knee of the character. And now I want another bone to create the shin of my leg. So I'm going to press E to extrude another bone. And that gives me a new bone that is connected to the, previ to the first one. Okay, so now I'm going to extrude another bone again with E and that will be the foot of the character and then one more and that will be the toe. And it's always a good idea to keep your scene organized so right away I'm going to rename these bones. There are a couple of ways to rename bones in Blender. Uh, one is to go to this tab, the bone tab. At the top you'll see the name of the, of the bone of the currently selected or actually of the active bone. Another way is to press F2 and that will give you this menu. So let's rename the bone over here and I'm going to call this one thigh.l. Now this suffix .l is very important and I'm going to explain why in a second. So let's click on the next bone and call it shin.l. The next one will be foot.l. And this one will be tall.l. Let's go to front view, select all of these bones that we just created, and move them in the x axis. Okay, so now we have an armature for our leg. Now I'm going to explain why we added the .l suffix really quickly. I'm going to select this top bone and press Shift D to duplicate it. So that gives me a copy of this bone. And I'm going to call this one test 
and I'm not going to add the dot L suffix. So now I'm going to select all of my bones with by pressing A and then I'm going to click armature, this armature menu and then choose symmetrize. And as you can see, all of the bones that had the dot L suffix were mirrored on the other side of the character. Whereas this one, which didn't have the suffix, was not. So this suffix allows us to mirror our bones, which is very useful when we have symmetrical character, like, like here. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo, because I want to symmetrize later in the process. Uh, later on we are going to set up constraints for this leg to give it IK controls and if I symmetrize now I'll have to set up the IK constraints twice and I don't want to do that. I want to be efficient. Uh, next I want to build the spine of the character. I'm going to press Shift A and that will give me a new bone right where the 3D cursor is located. So this will be my spine, so I'm going to select this bone, press F2 and name it spine. Then I'm going to go to side view and scale it down to about this size. And then I'm going to press E and extrude three more bones so that I have four spine bones. Then I'm going to press E again to get another bone and that will be the neck bone and one more as a head bone. So my spine bones were automatically uh, named by Blender as a spine 001 and so on. Now I want to name my neck as neck and the head as head. Okay, great. And also, because these uh, bones are right in the center of the character, uh, they won't be symmetrized. So I don't need to add the dot L suffix to them. Now I also want an arm, so let's press Shift A again and that will give me a new bone and I'm going to align the thick part with the, with the shoulder, the thin part with the wrist of the character, then I'm going to select this whole bone, click in the middle of it and select it. I'm going to right click and choose Subdivide and that gives me two bones. So that's another way to get a chain of connected bones. So here I'm going to select this last nodule of the arm and uh, press E again and extrude another bone and that will be my hand. So let's name our bones. This one is um, upper arm dot L. This one will be lower arm dot L and hand dot L. And let's go to top view. The bones are well aligned, but when you rig stuff like arms and legs, uh, make sure you always give them a little bit of a natural bend in the elbow or in the knee. So here I'm going to move this nodule a little bit backwards like this. And also let's go to side view and see the leg. And I can see that it already has a little bit of a bend. So that, that's good. So make sure it's not completely straight like this. Make sure it's a little bit bent like this. So another feature that um, most biped characters, mo most humanoid characters should have is a collarbone. So I'm going to add that now. I'm going to press Shift A. This will give me a new bone. I'm going to move it uh, roughly where the collarbone is. And I need to move it a little bit in the y-axis and I'm going to turn in front uh, off for a second. In front is very useful but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to gauge where your uh, bone is exactly inside the character. I want to move it just below the surface and then I'm going to turn in front on again. And let's name this bone as well. Align it a little bit better and name it color.hill. Another interesting feature that you can add to a humanoid character is pelvis bones. 
So let's select this last nodule, or actually the first nodule of the spine and press E to extrude another bone and extrude it sideways like this. And this bone is just going to help us with the weight painting of the, of the character. If I don't have this bone, then this leg bone will have too much of an influence over here in the pelvis area and, and I have to, I'll have to do a lot of difficult weight painting, but with this uh, bone that will speed up the process quite a lot. And let's name this bone pelvis.l. Uh, now I need to parent my bones. And so to perform parenting, uh, it's uh, very simple. You just select the child bo bone first, then shift select the one that uh, is going to be the parent, and then you press control P. And uh, in this case, I want to choose keep offset. In case you don't know what's the differences between keep offset and connected, let's press control P again and choose connected this time. And as you can see, my bone snapped, the child bo bone snapped to its parent. And so uh, up until now we were extruding bones and what extruding does is uh, basically perform connected parenting automatically. Okay, next I want to parent this pelvis bone to the spine, to the bottom of the spine. So again, select the pelvis, then shift select the spine, control P, keep offset. Then select the collar and shift select the end of the spine and press control P, keep offset. And uh, then the upper arm, shift select the uh, collarbone and press control P and choose keep offset. And now if I go to pose mode, so in case you don't know, edit mode for armatures is where you build the armature. And pose mode is where you pose and animate it. And so in pose mode, I can rotate this bone here and I can see that it rotates everything with it. This uh, pelvis bone rotates the leg. The leg, I mean the thigh, rotates everything below it. Uh, same thing with the arm and then the collarbone. So yeah, everything is connected now. And so I'm going to go back to edit mode. I'm going to press Shift A and that will give me another bone. And now I want to go to side view and select the nodule in the thin part of the bone and let's see, um, I'm going to, I want to have increment a snapping selected and I want to uh, turn on snapping and then move my bone down so it looks like this, so it lies flat on the ground. The reason I, I did this is because I want to align this bone with the orientation of the world. The way I know that it's aligned with the orientation of the world is by looking at this axis that we turned on from here. And if I look at the axis and then at this axis here, if they match, then we have a bone that is aligned with uh, the world axis. And so this bone is going to be my root bone. With uh, things like root bones, you want them to be aligned with the world. I'm going to press F2 and rename this bone root. Um, let's turn on snapping because that will create problems. And I'm going to press Shift D and then Z to constrain the transformation to the Z axis. And then I want to make this uh, bone a little bit smaller in the y-axis, something like this, and move it uh, more towards the spine. Okay, and this will be my, my pelvis control. And let's do some more parenting. I'm going to select this last uh, bone of the, of the spine, then shift select the, this newly created pelvis, uh, control P, keep offset, and then I'm going to select the pelvis and shift select the root and then control P, keep offset. And now if I go to pose mode, my root moves everything with it. My pelvis all, uh, moves everything except for the, for the root. And uh, that's exactly what I wanted, so that's great. The base of my armature is looking good. 
So next I want to set up IK controls for the leg, just so we can practice setting up constraints a little bit. So let's go to side view and select this nodule and press E to extrude another uh, new bone and constrain the movement to the Y axis by, by pressing Y. Now when we extrude this bone it's going to be connected, so I want to disconnect it and I can do that easily by pressing Alt P and say clear parent. There are a couple of ways to set up uh, constraints in Blender. Well, first we have to go to pose mode. Select this new bone and let's press F2 and name it something. Let's say ik.l. So I have this bone selected. Ne next I'm going to shift select the shin bone and I'm going to press Control, Shift and C. And I'm going to choose inverse kinematics. Okay, so now in pose mode, if I grab this IK control bone that I created and move it, you see that something is already happening. Um, you know, my, this bone moves the whole uh, chain of bones around. Now that's not exactly what we want, even though it's kind of cool. You know, so let's select this shin bone and go to this tab, and that is the bone constraints properties. Here, when we pressed Control shift c and chose Inverse Kinematics, this constraint was added uh, to our bone. And because we had this bone selected first, Blender automatically populated these areas, the target and bone. So this is a, a automation that happens when you use the Control shift c uh, shortcut. Let's see what we can do about about the behavior of the IK control. Under the IK constraint options, there is this field called chain length. And if you set that to two, and then move your IK bone around, you can see that it now only moves the shin and the thigh, thigh bones. That's exactly what we want. Uh, however, the behavior is a little bit wonky. You can see that the knee bends backwards and it also kind of bends sideways. So one way to improve the sideways rotation is to select this bone, uh, go to bone properties, and then under inverse kinematics, lock Y and Z. Now, how do I know that I want to lock Y and Z? Uh, here again, these axis come in handy. This may be a little bit uh, difficult to explain, but you can see that the x-axis uh, comes off the side of, of the bone. When you get used to looking at this axis, you will understand that your shin bone should rotate on the x-axis. Another way to find out which axis you want to rotate on is to choose the rotate gizmo and set it to local mode. And then I can see that this red circle, which is the uh, red is always the x-axis, is uh, the, the circle that I want to rotate my knee on. These things are a little bit difficult to explain and they take some getting used to. So don't worry if it didn't make uh, perfect sense right now. And now if I move my bone again, there is no sideways rotation of the knee. But there is still a backwards rotation of the knee. So we need to fix that now. Let's go to side view and then switch to edit mode and select the this nodule, the knee. And again press E to extrude another bone, constrain the uh, extrusion to the Y axis by pressing Y. And now we have an, an, a new bone. Uh, we want to disconnect it again. So let's uh, press Alt P and clear parent. And let's move this bone a little bit on the y-axis. And press F2 and rename this one Paul.l. There is a way to help Blender figure out which way uh, your knee should be rotating. And that is done with this uh, Paul controller. And so let's go to pose mode, select this shin bone, uh, go to the constraints tab, and under Paul target, choose first choose armature and then another field uh, will pop up and in this field start typing pole 
and choose uh, poll.l. As soon as you uh, select poll.l, your leg will be rotated in a weird direction. And I, I don't know the exact uh, technical reason that that happens, but it does happen. And the way you fix it is by uh, playing around with this pole angle value. If I rotate it to around minus 90, I can see that it looks almost okay. And so let's uh, set it to minus 90. Uh, if you've done something uh, different than me, then for you it might be another value. But usually it's something like uh, 90 or 180, a value like this. Now if I move my um, IK control, I can see that there is no flipping of the knee unless I go very far towards this pole target, uh, then my uh, knee will flip. So let's um, go to edit mode and move this uh, pole target a little bit further away like this. And another thing we can do again in edit mode is to parent um, the, pole, the pole target to the IK control with keep offset. And then whenever we move the uh, IK, the pole target will move with it. And uh, also if we move around the pole target, you can see that the knee, the direction of the knee changes uh, and it follows the pole target whatever, wherever it goes. So if you move stuff around uh, in pose mode, you can always select all bones and go to pose, clear, transform, all. That will set up your bones in their default pose. So next, let's, let's try to select this pelvis control that we created and see what happens. This allows me to bend the knee of my character. Uh, the only problem that I see here is that as my character ducks as my uh, character's uh, body goes down, this foot rotates with it. So let's see what we can do. Let's um, clear the pose. And then I'm, so I'm going to go to edit mode and select the foot of the character and press Alt P and clear parent. So now in, in pose mode, if I move the pelvis around, the, the, the foot stays put, which is nice. But if I try to move the IK control, the foot gets disconnected. So uh, there is an easy way to fix this. Uh, just select the shin bone, then shift select the foot bone, press control shift C again for the constraints menu and choose copy location. And your foot will uh, move to the knee of your character, but that's easy to fix. Just uh, go to the constraints tab if you're not there and uh, set this, this property, head tail, to 1. And now if I move the IK control, the foot moves with it. And if I move the uh, pelvis control, the foot stays put. And that's great. That's exactly what I wanted. So there are many more features that we can uh, add to a character. But uh, this is not this kind of detailed tutorial. I just want to show you the basics so that we can work with Rigify. Now that my armature seems to be working the way I want it, I want to symmetrize the symmetrical parts of my character. So let's go to edit mode, then uh, switch to front view and select all of these bones that need to be symmetrized. So make sure you don't miss anything. We need this pelvis bone, uh, we need the collarbone, we want the shin and the foot and the IK and the toe, and and in this pole target, all, all of this we want to symmetrize. So I have it selected now. I'm going to go to armature and choose symmetrize. And that symmetrized my bones. So now if I go to pose mode and let's say move the pelvis control, everything seems to behave as, as, I, as I expect it to do. If I move this bone, then it... Uh, moves the newly created leg, which is great. And if I move the root, it moves everything with it, except for the IK controls, uh, which I forgot to parent. When you do manual rigging, you need to make sure that everything 
that is not parented to anything else is parented to the root uh, bone. So let's go to edit mode again and select these two IK bones and shift select the uh, root bone, control P, keep offset. And then if I go to pose mode, I can move the root and it moves everything with it. There isn't much left to do here. We want to tell Blender really quickly that some bones will be used to deform our mesh and others will be just control bones. Let's see which one are control bones. The root bone, for example, is control bone. It's not meant to deform your mesh in any way. It's just meant to move the whole armature with it. Another control bone is the IK control. And same thing with the pole target. This pelvis control is a control and everything else will be just deforming bones. I'm going to go to the bone tab, look for this deform area and next to it there is a checkbox. By default this checkbox is checked. So let's select all of our control bones by shift clicking and now here's a little trick. If you hover over this checkbox and hold alt and click on it. This will disable the deformations for all of the selected bones. If you only click on it, then only the last selected will uh, get the change of property. If I check my bones, they all have deform unchecked. If I verify the other ones, which I didn't have selected, they still have the deform property checked. And that will help with the next step, which is to set up automatic weights. So I'm going to go to object mode, Select my character, shift select the armature and then press Control P. And as you can see, this gives me a menu that's different than uh, what we got in armature edit mode. But Blender does that a lot. Uh, depending on your mode or your selection, it will give you different options. From here, I want to select with automatic weights. And now if I select the armature and go to pose mode and try moving my bones, my mesh is deforming with my bones. You can see how the IK works with the mesh now. And so I did some changes to my mesh, so I'm going uh, to my armature, so I'm going to press A to select everything, then go to pose, clear transform, all, and that will give me my default pose. So this is what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Um, actually posing and animating your character is a whole other beast. And so the last thing I want to do here is set up some custom shapes for my control bones. Press Shift A and choose Circle. And let's move this out of the way a little bit. You can use any shape you want as a uh, custom shape. So uh, to demonstrate that, let's add another um, object, let's say a sphere. And I'm going to change some of the settings and move it to the side. Let's go to the rig now. Uh, go to pose mode, select the root bone for example, go to the bone properties and uh, look for viewport display and there find the custom object area. And let's click here and select the circle. My root bone became this circle that is easier, easy to see and easy to select. Let's give the IK controls the same circle as a custom mesh. And let's give the spall targets the sphere. And here the sphere is a little bit uh, big, so I'm going to select the, both of these bones, which now look like spheres. And I'm going to hold Alt and drag this property here. And again, this is the trick that allows us to manipulate multiple uh, Blender objects at the same time. Let's give this bone again the circle shape. And that's more or less all I want to do. Now you can see this uh, circle shape controls my pelvis movements and the root is controlled by this circle. This circle here controls the IK movements. So that will be it for this chapter. You can try to select the different bones, uh, rotate them around, uh, move them around and see what, you, what poses you can get.
So I hope that was a useful introduction to Blender armatures. And if you want to learn more, I'm going to include some resources that will point you to other tutorials. But I think that should give you enough of a base uh, so you can start working with Rigify. Thanks for watching. The next chapter will be available soon or it may already be uploaded. Details will be in the video description. Or just go to cgdive.com slash rigify where you'll find the latest chapters, additional resources and information about advanced lessons that I'm working on. If you want to support me, click like and subscribe.